presenting sponsor, Art Greensboro. And we'd like to give a special thanks this evening to Barbara Gretzer, who has sponsored uh, this evening's uh, reception.
passion for observation. And I have a number of my students are here today. Uh, and they know what I'm talking about because I really believe in, the, uh, in looking at and really looking at things and learning how to see things. And I think that kind of filtered through my father, uh, that kind of reporter's eye for detail. Um, for my mom, I think I got my imagination. Uh, and uh, we talked about this last night. But, um, so those are the two kind of, uh, the teeter-totter of what I, I grapple with every day is, is the uh, looking and then where does the imagination fit in? Where do I just let go and paint? Where do I you know, just try to represent what I see? And that, that dynamic is just something that continues every day. So, I was going through a bunch of quotes that I kept around for many years, and I, I picked out about eight of them, and then Tori right me, so I said, you can't do that. <laughs> People came here to look at your work, not to hear you talk. And, well, she didn't say that, but, um, <laughs> but I know it's I right. So, this one is the one that, that means the most to me, I think. In the end, works of art are the only media of complete and unhindered communication between man and man that can occur in a world full of gulfs and walls that limit the community of experience. Uh, John Dewey, Artist Experience, 1934. Um, don't know how I ever found that quote, uh, because in my art history class, I don't think I was ever, uh, that was not a textbook, but that spoke to me. And what it says to me that art is a, a universal language. Um, art speaks uh, like soul to soul. And um, that, that kind of is, that's what I, that's where I come from in my work. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you, um, oh, I've got to set my time, I've got to get it going. Um, <laughs> I'm a partner. I'm going to set this for 25 minutes. I'll start this up for a second. What I want to do is I'm going to show you a group of uh, selected works from this particular show and tell you some, a little bit of the background of some of these pieces. Um, so this is the view from my back porch uh, in, in Hillsborough. And uh, I, so it's, it's, it's a scene, it's like 11 a.m. on a summer morning. Uh, what I do is each paint, I can only paint for about two hours because that light will change drastically as the sun moves. So what happens is this painting is actually over a period of, say, a month of going there three or four times a week and uh, just painting for two hours at that time period. And um, trying to get, just trying to get it right. You know, I'm not thinking philosophy or anything. I'm just thinking of how do I, how, it just, is this looking like what I'm seeing? It's very, you know, very rudimentary. Um, This is a scene out of the front of uh, my studio, and um, this is, I started in, in the spring, and I took it as far as I could. I, I wasn't happy with it. The following spring, I picked it up again, and I started reworking it, and this one, unlike the previous one, is a little more, um, uh, I'm adjusting things in here. I, I started to like, like the shape of the sunlight on the pavement and the shadow here. Um, and as more and more I looked at the grass at my front door, I saw it really wasn't this brilliant green, but it was really full of these little subtle changes all through it. So I, you know, I worked with that. But this piece is a, a little more product of, of my, of something else I'm just, just looking. I'm bringing a little bit of my imagination, a little bit of my, what I like, shapes or whatever. Ooh, okay. 
This is the, uh, it's a church, it's across the street from my studio. Uh, I have a, a little deck, a little porch, and um, this is, I did a series of about nine of these, and three of which are in the show. Uh, this is the uh, 7 a.m. The sun is behind me. Uh, it's just coming up and illuminating the brick, the red brick on this. It happens to be a church. I have downplayed that by I've eliminated the cross that's here. Whoops. Um, um, So this is uh, 10 a.m., so three hours later. Again, I'm working about two hours. I have about a two-hour window before the light changes drastically. And at 10 a.m., the sky, I used to use a lot of photographs in my work, but I started to see that the subtle changes in the color wasn't really coming through in the photography. So I have uh, really enjoyed just like using my eye and, you know, it's. Part of me likes, likes that kind of old-fashioned thing, like just look at the same thing and don't have a filter of photographs and everything in front of me, but see how I can respond to what, the eye is much more sensitive than a camera is. And um, so I do that. So, so you can see the shadow now was here earlier, the shadow was in the foreground. So the time is changing. This is spring. Uh, these are evergreens here, these trees or just starting to bud. Okay, 1 p.m. So by now the sun has gone up and over and the facade of the church is actually in shade. Um, the, the, you know, this is more bleached out in here. It's that kind of midday summer sun. You can see now these trees are fully uh, blossoming. This is more midsummer. <coughs> So uh, some days are rainy days. Uh, I, I worked, the sky is gray, right? But it's really made up of a lot of uh, subtle variations to try to get, to me, the challenge is to how to get a, a luminous gray. I and mean, that's a, all painters, at least painters uh, who work with color, I think that is what we're trying to do is how to make <coughs> colors that aren't inherently strong and brilliant, but how to make uh, grays and neutrals, near neutrals, how to make them full of life. And I mean, that's really, what, that's all I'm really doing as a painter, is how, uh, trying to make color come, come to life and be, have a, a, a like animate, animated or something. <laughs> uh, I was talking to Noe earlier today, and he said, so how are you feeling about your talk? And as painters, among painters, we don't really like to talk <laughs> So, you know, oh, yeah, great. <laughs> but nevertheless, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to do it because, I, you know, if it helps people see the work better, I, mean, I think it's a good thing to do. Uh, I think this is the last one in the series. I believe this was in our show. Um, this is, uh, so this is twilight, again, it's seven to nine, so that's, that was my two hour window. I probably worked uh, like at least two dozen two hour sessions over a period of several months. Uh, and things are you know, always changing, no two nights are alike. So that's another difficulty. And if you don't use a photograph, how do you, you know, how do you figure what, what, what you're gonna stay with? So, you know, I, I, in this one, I really want to stick with this orangey yellow horizon thing. Um, so anyway, so that's seven to nine in the summertime. And uh, my dinner in the summer at my house is always late. <laughs> That's a
the last one. Uh, this one is, is in the show. Uh, and this is uh, you know, obviously the evening. Uh, it's really the first time I've ever uh, tried to do artificial light as well as the natural you know, uh, light of the moon, moonlight. Somebody said, so why did you go and put the telephone wires in there? <laughs> and, you know, it's because I, it's not really a portrait of a church. It's, it's the whole environment. And I, to me, actually, I thought they were nice, the way they went across there. And, uh, and I'm a, a big fan of, uh, I guess, it, well, the Ashcan School originally, uh, New York School of Painters, who really believed in painting uh, the grit and grime of everything around them. And uh, so that to me, this was a little bit of the, you know, this is the real scene here. It's not, a, it's not an idealized picture. Uh, I, I also, while I was painting this, I had to uh, rig up a light on my easel so I could, so I could see. <laughs> okay, now as far as uh, some historical references here, um, there, I'm thinking of two painters, this is one and another one you probably can guess, uh, who worked in series. Anybody want to guess? Warhol? Why is That's true. No, but I'm thinking in terms of one object done over and over. Anyone? Anyway. Thank you. Good, good, good student here. <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> So yeah, we most of us know Monet, and um, I think I, the next slide shows his, his uh, series of the uh, uh, cathedral. But also, um, this is an American painter. Uh, alongside the Hudson River School was another school of, uh, called the Luminous Painters. And I discovered these guys after, uh, uh, after college, and just really fell in love with him. And his, his work, uh, I first, Saw his work at the Metropolitan Museum, where I used to I used to live not too far from the museum, and I spent an awful lot of time there. And I, I really feel that has um, been just as important to me as actually looking into the landscape is a knowledge of, of painting and of, of the culture and all that. So I, that was I was just so fortunate to be near this great museum. Anyway, I, did, I discovered this guy, and. Here's a series, the same, same uh, composition, but the subject is really about the light of life and the change of life. So, so here's uh, Monet, and uh, he rented a room across from this cathedral in France and did 30 versions of this. Uh, and it really what it brings home to me, after a while, it's not so much about the church or even the physical structure. It's about a, a sense of light. It's kind of dematerialized. And that's the kind of thing that, that I find really interesting. So, no need to look for the esoteric beyond the already miraculous. <laughs> That's Cezanne. And I, I, you know, I just love that statement. Because I, to every, everything it really is a miracle if we just stop and, and look at it. You know, at least that's what I'm telling myself. <laughs> and um, I, I see little glimpses of that every so often. You know, and, and just these commonplace things. And uh, it's so much there. So um, it became winter. I really don't like to paint out the cold. So I retreated back into my studio. And I started doing some still lives. Um, this is a, a friend of ours who's a potter, made this cup. I really loved it. And uh, I wanted to concentrate on the light moving from the window here into slow shade and how to represent that. Um, those are kind of challenges I, I like. 
Also, I think I had the whole the whole church thing. Uh, it's a lot of it's painstaking work, a lot of detail and all that. And I think I just got to the point where okay, can't can't do this um, because you know another theme I I keeps coming back up with me is that it's a, it's a lot it's hard work to paint and to it's a, it's a daily it's a job and um, I have a quote in here uh, somewhere well, I'll tell you I may I may not have put it in here but I saw Chuck Close give a talk once and um, and again my class has probably heard me say this he said that uh, inspiration is for amateurs uh, the rest of us just go to work. <laughs> I mean, inspiration, if one was to wait, at least if this one was to wait for inspiration, uh, there'd be very little work done. <laughs> so, um, but, I, but I believe that, I believe that they work together, actually. You know, the more you work, the more inspiration you're going to find. But it just, that's, I think that they go together. Um, uh, this, uh, Laura probably knows the story behind this. Um, Laura Way is the executive director here, by the way. She's right here. Um, uh, we went over and looked at the Greensboro Historical Museum and there's a beautiful uh, exhibit of Jugtown Pottery. And I didn't know that much about Jugtown Pottery, and I just fell in love with it. It's all very earth colored uh, pots and cups and saucers. And it's right here, it was, uh, I don't know if it still exists, this particular spot where they did it, but they just dug it out of this ground, the earth, the, the clay in North Carolina, and made these beautiful objects. And then there was some story of them trying to, uh, a woman who tried to sell them up in New York. And um, I just kind of love that North Carolina, New York connection. Um, so it, back to the color of this thing. So. It turns out that Green Hill had had a show of, of these pots, and they had some stuffed out in the closet in the shop. I was able to buy a few of them very reasonably. And uh, I went back to my studio and made a painting. And this is, um, again, I'm, I'm controlling the light. I've, I've blocked off all of the, well, there's one other big window in my studio. So I just have one window. So my light, is, I do have more than two hours now. I have three or four hours where the light's pretty, pretty, um, pretty regular. So again, that was a big. Uh, that felt really good after just having these two-hour windows in the churches to have a, a extended period of time. <laughs> so Cezanne said that. A uh, painting is first and foremost an optical affair, which uh, to me means that it's, it's just about looking and seeing things. Um, I bring that up because uh, this is an object that I've carried around with me for 30 years, somebody, or 40 years. Somebody made it, gave it to me, and it's all, you can't see it too well, but it's all chipped and all that. But um, I felt like I finally had the moment in my life where I could just appreciate it, to spend time looking at it and, and make a painting. This is a, an influence, this is not my painting. This is uh, Wilhelm uh, Hammershoy, he's a Danish artist. And uh, this is from 1903. Uh, I discovered his work at the Brooklyn Museum. There was a show 30 years ago of Danish artists. Um, but, <coughs> Uh, you know, it's, it's also like some interiors of Hopper, I think, uh, where there's this light back of light and shadow in a room. Uh, so that's some of the inspiration of the next series of works I want to show you. Um, so this, again, is my studio. Um, it's pretty, pretty much exactly how it was. I, it, you know, took took many sessions. Uh, again, I had the north light, so I was able to have more than just a few hours a day to work on it. Um, 
you know, I'd have to take little marks where that chair was because I kept on getting moved around. Um, this refers to, this is a blackboard. Oops. 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 Um, and this, this is a color triad. So um, I taught a color class, so that was there. Um, and I left that in there. So this is, okay, this is the light, northern light coming in, studio. This is the same, close to the same scene. I've cropped it, I've come a little closer. I've shut off the northern light, and now I'm letting in the afternoon sunlight. So this, this whole wall has become uh, that warmer sunlight. So again, this is the kind of thing, it's a series of the same basic Object, same room, but different light. So it's about the light. Um, the other thing is that, uh, oops. Okay, so, so this this was all over a year's time, say. So, so when I got to the blackboard here, and I started to paint it again. I had taken all these notes, thousands of notes up here, and I and I started and I paint. I spent some time painting. <coughs> Painstaking again, like all the notes, making them look like charcoal, all that, or char chalk. And then I thought, this is does not add to the painting. What am I going to do? So I had the, the here's where the inspiration. Was. I just I went over to the blackboard and just erased everything. <laughs> so um, and and then I was then I erased it and you know worked to make it look like an erased blackboard. But I felt it. I felt it was. I was okay with <laughs> uh, Just a quick, brief uh, note here on um, kind of the background to painting. You know, the, this is uh, you know, like the cup you saw earlier, a few slides back. Uh, this is a black and white representation of a cup in space. So this is a black and white study. Uh, this is kind of a color study of a, of a cup. Same process here. Uh, first, a drawing, and then that drawing is uh, I made into a black and white study. And these are some I start to try to figure out what colors work with that. And then here's some possible leaf colors. And I, yeah. These are the colors that are used here, plus like this top color to make all these colors. You don't have to understand it. It's just to show you that. Every periodically, I step back and do kind of a um, like if uh, I was a piano player, do practicing scales. Um, that's what this this is here to show you. Again, this is this this is another example of these scales of color scales. Um, then when I go to paint, though, I, I am not. I, don't, I, I let go of all of that. I'm not thinking about it. You know? And sometimes after uh, I'm, I've painted and I'm stuck in a painting, I might go back and refer to some of these color, color ideas, color notes. Um, it's, it's, it, it doesn't seem to, if it's working as I'm painting, it's in a more unconscious level, all that color stuff. Uh, these are, again, just uh, some sequences that I've made between colors. Uh, sky sequences. When I come up with a good sky, I'll take a note. I'll make a little uh, dab of how I did it, and make these are all notes on the uh, what colors I've used to get those colors. Um, I had an idea for what if I made this portable, I could go out into the landscape and make um, color, make notes. I numbered every one of these. I could go out there and just like make notes. It doesn't work. <laughs> Hasn't yet. Um, this is called a Pochard box. I put my eyes on there to get an idea of how tiny it is. But um, I got this is really what got me into painting outdoors because I'm not. I just don't like a lot of attention. Like I don't like to go set up my 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 uh, you know tripod out in, in town. And I just don't like that. So. This got me into it because it's so tiny. It's the size of a cigar box, and I could kind of be very discreet and 
off in the corner, or even in my car, and paint. And um, you know, I didn't feel self-conscious. So, and I actually found this. Uh, I was reading a book. I found an old bookstore, and he talked about this Pashad box in an English bookstore. He he bought it, and I contacted that English bookstore, and they made it for me. And from the magic of a Mastercard, you know, six months later. <laughs> so, um, but it's really wonderful. All the paintings, and everything. My brushes are in there, and uh, I, I I've used that thing, and, and I, now I have a collection of different sizes and all that. But but all of the smaller sketches that you'll see in the show are are basically done with this kind of contraption. Uh, okay, this is a very early. This is one. This is the. I think this is the only one in the show that's not uh, done in the last year or two. Um, there's an early oil sketch done with that push-out box. I used to live up uh, in Springs, which is near East Hampton and Long Island, and that's where I really discovered the landscape. This is way back in the '80s, and I and I had decided this is, you know, this is enough for me in the landscape to do for the rest of my life. So I'm glad that Eden chose that. Another quote uh, from Marcel Proust, the real voyage of discovery consists not in seeking new landscapes, but in having new eyes. Okay, this is a quick, I better, I'm gonna hurry up here. Um, this refers to this painting over here of the trees, and I'll show you, I'll show you up here on the screen. Um, it started off as a, a black and white study uh, from nature, a collage, sometimes I'll, I'll do a collage. And just notice the roots, all right? The roots, that's, no, these aren't the roots, this is, this is shadow, shadow of, the, of that. So a year passes, I have this around the studio, I want to do something with it, I'm not sure what. I end up, um, okay, I end up turning it upside down, and then I, I start to add color. These, these were the shadows. But for some reason, I go figure, I couldn't, a regular tree didn't inspire me. So I, this, though, this shape did. So I, I turned it upside down. I knew I wanted it to be winter uh, at the Air Mount, which is this park nearby. I started going over to Air Mount and taking some color notes. Oops, that's my 25 minute form. Okay. Okay. I did a small sketch here of that. So I started to work what was once a shadow into real limbs. Um, I would go back over to Airmount, I'd keep making other drawings and oil sketches, and then um, I got to this, which you'll see later. But um, this, this to me is, is an example of, you know, with a cup I showed you was my pure observation, this is a little bit of the observation mixed with my imagination. Um, okay, so I, I, my start in painting, I think, came from my, my grandparents had a cottage up in Toxway, uh, in the mountains, Edie referred to that earlier, and my, um, he was a distant uncle of mine, was, was an amateur Sunday painter, and I used to watch him on the deck up there painting the mountains, painting the lake in front of us, and uh, Uncle Virgil, um, I, well, his name was Uncle Virgil. Uh, and, and this was before like TV and all that stuff. Well, it wasn't was TV, but we didn't have that. <laughs> so I, I didn't have a lot to do. Uh, and what I was going to do, my mom got, was made sure that I got some pastels and I started drawing and, and drawing the, the landscape. So um, that, that when I got, when I was up at Grandfather Mountain last summer, I really felt like I had to come full circle. I started, you know, this is where I started, North Carolina Mountains. And, um, that's nice. Um, I just a few more, let me run through this. Don't rush on our account. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> that's me. <laughs> so, the, the, um, there are a couple of things here I will say real quick. Uh, I always contradict kind of myself, so, I, you know, I, I, pretty much figured out that, uh, you know, I don't work from photographs anymore. Well, that's not true. That the last painting 
is based on is based on this painting is based on this Polaroid photograph. So, you know, I think what I've learned is uh, slowly is that you know all these kind of philosophical constructs constructs are can be prisons. So I'll let go of them sometimes. I'll use the photograph if it helps. You know, not to try not to get too rigid about anything. You know, so. Watched Uncle Payne. That was fun. <laughs> um, all right, and then I think I will say this one. Uh, I read this review and the paper about uh, this book, and I think it's a great, uh, great. I don't know. Can you guys read that? <laughs> I'll read it after. But it's a great description of the creative process. Now he's talking about writers, so I'll just. Just put in painters. Uh, authors like cyclists must push off in a specified direction with hope and uncertainty. Both make wrong turns, and both are prone to whimsy, serendipity, and sudden inspiration. Not to mention potential disaster. <laughs> Alloyed with hubris and self-doubt, anguish and delight. Uh, OK. Um, this is from Atlantic Beach, North Carolina. Uh, uh, Tori Stroud, who, uh, to, who chose my work in uh, Greenville, had given me the keys to their condo. And I think she expected me to come back with a painting of the ocean. Instead, I did the condo. <laughs> but there's something very particular about light. You know, any place has its own particular light, but it's just this very white like washed out bright light down there. And I, that's really what I was trying to capture. Uh, these are some of the oil sketches that I did last summer that are in the show. Uh, and these often are preliminaries from larger works. I mentioned Tori Stroud, who represents my work in Greenville. I want to mention Jane Tindall. She represents my work in Chapel Hill. She's here tonight. <laughs> um, okay, more Grandfather Mountain. Ooh. And I'm going to leave you with this last quote uh, it's by Willa Cather. 